from Alan Turing, the British computer scientist, uh, on forward, the, an artificial intelligence is a kind of artificial human. Um, I, I would argue that it actually should be seen in a different way, that it should be seen not as, um, not as, a, as a synthetic human, but rather as uh, an emergent property of matter. Uh, the planetary scale takes forms of different kinds of different kinds of scale, obviously at different kinds of scales. Put simply, intelligence is one it is an emergent effect of some of the ways that matter organizes itself. It can organize itself into organic systems uh, like the brains of animals. Um, it can organize itself into uh, interlocking systems like an ant hill. Um, but there are also ways in which rocks and metal with electricity running through them um, and with very small gateways can produce effects of intelligence. Intelligence is an emergent property of matter. It can be seen as a kind of a, a solvent, uh, a particular kind of, of sort of algorithmic reason that is not, not built into matter. It, it is, my argument is not not panpsychism. It is not that intelligence is in the matter, but rather that certain ways in which matter can be organized produce this possibility of intelligence, produce the emergent effect of intelligence. So sapient, so the brain tissue of a sapient species such as humans um, is clearly one of the ways in which matter can organize itself to produce uh, intelligence and the effects of intelligence, but it is not the only one. And the key idea I wish to propose is that um, the real philosophical implications of AI will have less to do with us teaching machines how to think than with us understanding a, a wider range of all the ways in which intelligence can be produced such that we understand our particular version of it uh, along that spectrum with greater clarity. This is the Copernican turn, that we actually see it where we fit in this scheme because we now see that intelligence is not just human intelligence, it is also something else as well. 